Hey guys, Blue Commander here, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I've created a brand new plugin for you, and it's called Bling Edit Commands. So as you all know, Bling Edit itself does not have any commands in it, it all uses the sword and then it shows a tell roll message. However, with this plugin, you can now do slash, trigger, space, and as you can see, there's a load of new commands. So, the reason why they're under slash trigger and it's not just a normal command like slash, whatever, is because that's not actually possible with data packs. However, slash trigger is an actual command. So I could either use slash trigger or I could use slash function. But as you can see, slash functions are a bit cluttered with like stuff you don't really need. So I just decided I use slash trigger as literally no one uses it. So as you can see, it's just like a hub for all of the bling edit commands, which I kind of really like now. So there's three different categories. There's general, there's operations, and there's movement and I'll go over each of them right now. I'm not gonna go over the installation of the plugin because hopefully most of you know how to do that. If you don't, just search on the internet how to download a data pack in 1.13 and there'll be plenty of tutorials on out there. So let's just get into the first command. So if I select my region, sometimes, I mean, I don't know how many people do this, but I all the time personally, I always clear my chat and I get kind of annoyed because I can't access the action menu. So to fix this, I just go to the little command slash trigger and then you can type actions. Now for some commands you need an add and set value which is why it says it here. So if I go set or add and then I can, you can put in a number. So not all of them actually need this though so if they don't you can just run it normally like that. And as you can see it did, it re-gave me the menu. So if you like don't really know which ones do need values and which ones don't need values it's kind of like self-explanatory for most of them but say you didn't know say for this one i put set five it will still do it it'll still work but it'll also tell me uh, adding setting a value isn't needed for actions just so you know for next time so as you can see at the moment i have my box particles which are in the option settings here i have them off but if you want to change without actually going into the actions menu you can just do slash trigger and as you can see box particles this doesn't need a value either. This one just toggles on and off, so if they're off when you run this, they'll now on. If I do it again, it'll turn off, etc. So a bug I found with this, which will hopefully be fixed in another version, but for now I'm on build 1.0.1 with my plugin. And you've got to have changed the value in the actual action menu at least once here. So if I could do this at least once, for uh, the command to work. I don't know why, I'm gonna look into it. But when I was recording earlier, well, I was preparing to record, I came across that bug. So there we are. So next we have slash trigger list plugins. Now this is quite a simple command. You just have to select it and it will give you a list of all the plugins you've got installed. Apart from this one, as you can see, if I do slash data pack list, I don't actually have any plugins installed. So none are listed. But it basically just prints out the message for which how you get here. So that's why it's empty. So now we've done all the general, we're going to move on to operations. So operations are probably my favourite. They're also what build 1.0.1 was all about. So in the first update I've given to it after build 1, it was basically <laughs> I forgot to add a scoreboard into the data pack, so they didn't. Some of them didn't work. For example, near film, near replace, and spheres didn't work. But now they work, and also I improved the timings of them, like the optimization of them a lot as well, which I'll show you in a second. But anyway, so near fill and sphere are the same thing. But basically near fill, it's gonna create a sphere because I can select a region using set. So I can set, for example, radius of four. And it's gonna create, it's basically like the region selection in Bling Edit, but instead of, it's kind of like a 3D sphere region. So if I trigger set, for example, if I have a radius of one, it's gonna be one block. If I set five, it's gonna be five, radius of five away from me in a sphere all around me like that. Let's just start with one. Then as it's near fill, I'm gonna have to choose the filling block. So I can either click here and then use set block to set any block I like. But that doesn't work with air. So if you want air, you're gonna to have to choose the air button. You have to just press that. Or you can do remember from previous operation where it's just gonna uh, find where the last block you used in an operation for filling and it'll use that to save you with some time having to rewrite the set blocks every time. But for example, say I just do red concrete. It's 
going to say complete. Did you win all of radius of one? Because you know it's not much point just doing that. You may as well just run a set block command. But anyway, bigger radiuses are much more helpful. So if I go two, and this time I could do remember from previous operation. And as you can see, it's now a radius of two. It's like a little star thing. And now I could do radius jump a bit. Let's go to five, and let's set block to green. It doesn't just work with concrete. I could do green terracotta. If I move out eight before, I get stuck in it. As you can see, that's progress bar support. And there we go. Now there's a radius five sphere. Looking very nice. On the screen, I'll throw up the different, like the table of how fast it was before and how fast it is now in the new update. So I haven't actually made a video on the uh, old update. So you might not really see what I'm talking about, but trust me, there's some massive differences. Before it took 50 seconds for us uh, radius four sphere, I believe. And now it takes like less than that, like 46 seconds on a radius 25 sphere. So there's a massive difference. I'll go set, I'll set nine. And I'll just remember. So yeah, progress bar works. If it's a long one, it'll take a while. You don't lag too much in the original version as well. You kind of went in and out of not responding. So it's just much more smoother now. But I wanted to fix that before I made a video on it. So here we are. There you go, radius nut, it's really big now. And there we go. So the next one is, well I'll quickly show you sphere, how sphere works as well. If I go sphere, which means, like I said, it's the same thing. If I go set, nine, and so it's just blue concrete. Well, why not, let's just finish off with that. So then after this, we've got uh, Near Replace. So Near Replace is inspired from World Edit. It has a really cool feature called like, it's like slash replace near. So it's based off that. So quite often you just want to quickly change blocks around you and you don't really want to have to select a whole region. And it's just much more easy to do it this way. So now I'll go slash trigger. For example, if I go Near Replace set, let's set five, let's try and then let's make it uh, lime concrete. Let's see if we can make like an earth kind of shaped thing. And then we have to pick replace block because this is replaced. So we're going to have to replace one as well. So if I go blue concrete, there you go. Now it's going to replace all blue concrete in that radius five with green. So as we can see, start looking a bit like an earth, I guess. We could do that as here as well. Remember, remember. And there we go. Also, lots of different uses for this. So when near, I think it's spell near replace, set like eight, no, I did seven, whatever. Pick filling block, I could do set TNT and then replace grass blocks. And as you can see, it's gonna fill the area around me with TNT, which I could just like. So yeah, that's pretty helpful as well. I think with the replace option, I'm gonna add one where you can do all non-air blocks because that'd be kind of helpful. But anyway, now let's get into the next command. So yeah, there's also remove. This command uh, doesn't need a value and it's really basic. But anyway, if I just do trigger remove, it just acts like the delete option. So yeah, it's not that helpful, but I thought while I had it, there's no point removing it. And finally, we've also got store random. So this is just a bit of a shortcut, a speedier way to uh, store selection the random block pool. So say I selected this, I could go store random. As you can see, your random block pool stored in region and it gives you the region. So yeah, that's all these. Now finally, let's get into the movement. So these are the original ones I started off the plugin with because I just thought they were cool. So let's start with unstuck. So if I quickly make another sphere and get myself stuck in it, what this does basically is it's for here. Uh, I don't know what it was before, but I'll just go back to that. So if I do slash trigger and then unstuck, basically it's going to teleport me to the nearest block above me, which is free. So basically it frees myself if I've been doing operations. As you can see, I'm now in the sphere. But if I do trigger unstuck, as you can see, I'm now free. So yeah, 
Now the next one I'll do TP2. So if I do slash trigger TP2. None of the movements you have to put in a value. And what this will do is just teleport me to where I'm looking. So it takes a bit of a delay. Uh, I'm sure I can speed it up. So I probably will do that in the next update as well. Similarly to how I managed to speed up my near replace and near fill. Well, I mean that uses ratios, but this I could probably use that by just looping the function faster. So yeah, it's pretty fun to mess around with. It's accurate. Say I was looking at this red blob here. If I did slash trigger TP2. As you can see, I landed in here. And then next we have through. So as you can see, I quickly made a wall. So if I do slash trigger and then through, it's just gonna teleport me through the wall. So it says whoosh. Uh, if I'm not actually looking at a wall, it'll just tell me no wall, try below 10 blocks. And by the way, the TP2 uh, block limits 200 blocks, so it doesn't go on forever. And it'll give you a message similar to this, say it went over 200 blocks. But three doesn't just work with one block thick ones, it works up to 10 blocks thick walls. So as you can see, I just went through that three blocks, I think that was. Uh, here's six blocks, I think, so I should be able to put through this. There you go. So yeah, it's really helpful. Now finally, I will add more commands, but finally for this version anyway, we have up. Now up is, a, I think, a really well-known world edit. Well, I think it's well-known. I use it a lot. But a really well-known world edit command. And basically, you can just choose a value. Say I want to do five. And it'll just teleport me up five and put a piece of glass underneath me. So I can choose any value. I could go 100. It also looks negative, so I could go minus 56. That's very accurate. This one's very fast. Oh, I just got stuck on the ground. Good job, I can just do slash trigger unstuck. Oops, I didn't type it. There you go. Now I'm free. Anyway, that's all for this video. Uh, I'd love suggestions. I kind of want to focus on this project quite a lot because this is probably my favorite one so far. It's not got many features at the moment, but I feel like it has a lot of potential and I can't wait to see where it goes. So if you find any bugs, let me know. Suggestions, let me know. But apart from that, I'll see you all next time. Bye.